Today I'm going to share seven tips that will help you if you're divorcing a narcissist or other type of high conflict personality. And at the end of the video I'm giving away a free hour with my favorite divorce coach who's had a lot of success both with divorces and helping people divorce a narcissist. So be sure to watch to the end for details on how you can get that free hour. Now as narcissism seems to be becoming much more prevalent these days, especially in divorce, the first thing people need help with is properly identifying if their soon-to-be ex has narcissistic personality disorder, the characteristics of MPD, and also for you to realize that you're not at fault and there's nothing wrong with you. There are <clears throat> a couple of great videos on this channel to help you understand NPD and the characteristics, so I'll put a link to those videos in the comment section below for you. But when you're divorcing a narcissist, what you also want and also need are actual solutions. You need to know how to respond to the narcissist and how to deal with the narcissist during your separation and after your divorce. The first thing that you have to accept is that you can't learn to outmanipulate them. The reason is because, in their mind, the rules are constantly changing, so you're chasing a moving target. You'll never get ahead of them, and you'll never win with logic or reasoning or common sense, so you have to stop trying because you're only going to burn out. While you can't outmanipulate or control the narcissist, you can utilize strategies to deal with them and reduce the conflict and the stress on yourself. So here's tip number one. Because a narcissist mainly needs to control you, if things are quiet at any point in time, so meaning nothing to discuss with them about the divorce itself or about your kids, then what they'll try to do is try to create a problem or create a need for you guys to communicate. Because it's through their communication that they thrive on trying to control you and the type of conversation. Now by the way, I don't necessarily mean control where you go and when. They try to control your mind, your thoughts, your self-doubt, your self-esteem, your emotions, your guilt. They might even try to make you stressed, moody, while your kids are with you, so that if you're unsettled while your kids are with you, they can turn that around on you or use it against you later. Their MO is to flip it so that they seem like the better parent. So what you should remember is that just because you receive a text or an email or a phone call, it doesn't mean you must respond. So my number one tip is, if there's a specific update about your kids or a specific question, then sure, just answer the question, simple, straightforward, stay matter of fact. But when they start accusing you of something, blaming you, or saying it's your fault, or calling you names, you don't have to stay on the phone or answer their calls or respond to their texts or their emails. Often, silence is the best response. Firstly, it frustrates them, but more importantly, and for your own peace of mind, I'm going to share something with you that I found very profound when I first heard it, and it's helped me tremendously, which is, you can't have conflict without two willing parties. In fact, this applies in any conflict in life, but especially when, with a narcissist. Sure, they're making false accusations and saying hurtful things, but the ongoing conflict is what causes you stress and anxiety and frustration. If you don't continue to engage with them, the conflict stops then and there. Now I know you're thinking, yeah, but he's always the one making accusations, or she's always the one saying hurtful things, or he's always the one judging me, or making innuendos, or twisting the facts, or lying. And that's all very true. That's also what a narcissist does. Those are the definitions, or part of the definition, of a narcissist. If they didn't do those things, then they wouldn't be a narcissist and you wouldn't be watching this video. And no, you can't undo what they said, although you can learn to deal with that, but you can stop it from continuing. You can't stop them from being a narcissist, and you can't undo the things they say, but you can stop yourself from taking their bait. You can stop responding or engaging unless it's something important such as pertaining to the kids. And as long as your response is brief and limited, just stick to the facts. Number two, 
Keep them on a need-to-know basis. Don't share any personal information about yourself or your new life as a single because you actually give them ammunition to turn things around and criticize you or use it against you later. So for example, let's say you're dropping off the kids and you let it slip that you almost got a speeding ticket but you got off, the cop let you off with a warning because you really weren't going that fast after all. Well, that might seem pretty minor, but the narcissist will remind you until the end of time that you're an unsafe driver and tell people, anyone who will listen to them, that they're actually the victim because they're stressed now every time the kids get in the car with you. They'll over-dramatize just to get pity for themselves and make you out to be wrong. So if they don't know anything about your new personal life, they will likely just panic and try to find something they can twist and use against you but they won't be able to. Number three, stop assuming the narcissist cares. It's a tough one because at some point you love them and you thought they loved you too. If you're soon to be ex or your ex is a narcissist, then you're likely an empath or somebody who's very empathetic. And so realizing and accepting that after all the time you spent with your ex that they no longer care about you and can now be so hurtful towards you, can be very difficult to accept. As an empath, we find it hard to accept that anyone can be so mean-spirited, especially someone we once cared about and trusted. Number four, let their consistent verbal bashing, name-calling, and idle threats go in one ear and out the other. I know, I know. Sticks and stones, right? Easier said than done. I get it. If you think about it, no narcissist has ever conquered their ex in court simply based on the narcissist telling a judge stories to convince the judge um, and the judge just took it at face value and believed them. It's never happened. Judges are trained for that. They have a lot of experience and contrary to what most divorce, divorcing people think, judges need facts and proof, not he said, she said stories. In fact, Narcissists aren't looking for a judgment in their favor in court because that would mean that there's a resolution. And it's not about winning for them. It's about controlling. They want that process of control to continue. They want the drama to continue. So their MO is to play mind games with you, to wreak havoc with your mind and your emotions. They stir up the drama, play mind games with you, and then take a step back and accuse you of being crazy as if they had nothing to do with it. So like I said, judges don't care to hear what the narcissist has to say because judges only care about facts that can be proven, not stories or personal accounts of what happened. So let it go in one ear and out the other. Number five, stop trying to justify yourself. Remember that not only do they want to control you and make themselves out to be the smart ones, but they do this by trying to make you question yourself and question your own thoughts and actions and everybody else question you. So your natural defense is to try and justify yourself every time they accuse you of something. That's usually what the stress of continuing to engage comes from, is always trying to defend yourself. So tip number five is stop trying to justify yourself or what you do. You don't have to justify yourself to them. Secondly, you'll never win, but for some reason, victims want to keep trying because they don't want to feel defeated. You can win, but not engaging or responding with justification for yourself. They'll never say you're right or I'm sorry. Uh, you won't get justification, and that's actually what gaslighting is all about. The narcissist will do something selfish, and when you try to judge them or justify your response, to their selfish act, they'll twist the details to make you out to be the selfish one or the crazy one or the one who did something wrong. Their biggest talent is changing their reality to make them look good and you look bad. Number six, remember that it's not your fault. Whatever they accuse you of is not your fault and them suffering from NPD is not your fault. You didn't do it to them, and you didn't make them that way. You're just a victim in their life and in their story. 
If you watch my earlier video called Divorcing a Narcissist Part 1 and Understanding Narcissistic Personality Disorder, you'll recall that their insecurities probably come from their childhood or their teen years. Their insecurities were caused long before they met you, and if they didn't find you to control, then they would have found someone else. There's nothing wrong with you, and you're not the bad person they make you out to be. So it's quite the opposite, in fact. Number seven, stop trying to gain credibility or acceptance with them. When you're right about something or achieve a big accomplishment in your life, don't brag to them as if it will give you more credibility in their books or get you acceptance with them. Like I said before, they'll twist the details. You're chasing a moving target and they're exceptionally good lawyers and they have their own perception of reality. So you'll never get the acceptance or the credibility. You'll never hear congratulations or good for you or you deserve it. And if you're looking for that feeling of finally defeating them, then feel the victory in your own mind and you deserve that. But by now you realize they won't ever feel defeated by you in their own mind. They're too competitive. They're too insecure. They're too desperate for control. So they'll just rewrite the story. The biggest lesson in all of this is don't feel defeated. Don't feel inferior. Don't feel like it's your fault. Don't doubt yourself and don't live in fear of their next word. You deserve peace and happiness and confidence and high self-esteem. So if you want to be able to deal with the narcissist to avoid them wreaking havoc on you in your life, you can have these thoughts and visions as much as possible, but keep them to yourself. Think it, envision it, feel it, and believe it. You can walk the walk. Just stop trying to defeat the narcissist and stop thinking that you'll have closure or justification or vindication when you do. You will have closure and justification and peace and be able to move on, for sure. And you'll be able to avoid conflict if you follow some of these tips. When you stop trying to defeat them or change them or control them or make them understand, so to summarize everything here for you, the solution is when you create as much distance from them as you can, when you stop communicating with them unless absolutely necessary and keep it brief and to the point, when you stop engaging with them in any conversation that isn't about facts, but rather they've made something up about you, only then can you manage how they affect you. And remember, silence is deafening. Your silence to their nonsense remarks, their accusations, is the best defense for yourself. And it's like your kryptonite to the narcissist. If you have any questions about divorce or separation or divorcing a narcissist, uh, me and my team of divorce professionals and actually divorce specialists can answer all of your questions. Uh, any aspect of your divorce, whether it's real estate, legal, financial, emotional, parenting, insurance, um, we're all specialists in divorce and we each specialize in our own respective fields. So, and remember, there's never any obligation. If you want to email me or if you want to ask any of us any questions, there's no obligation and no pressure for anything. So just send me an email if you do have questions. Um, and my email is strictly confidential. Nobody sees it but me. It's mike at thedivorceguy.ca and I'd be happy to get back to you and help any way I can. And be sure to check out my friends at divorcespecialistgroup.com. They do have the best vetting process I've ever seen, which leads them to have the best professionals in town. I've had the privilege of working with almost all of them, and they, continual, they continually impress me and all of our clients. So check them out. They have a free download on their website. It's a divorce checklist that's really good, some really good information in there. So be sure to get that. And I hope this video was helpful, but please, before you forget, right now, click thumbs up just so that it can help other people that might be dealing with a narcissist. And now, if you'd like to speak to my favorite divorce coach uh, for a free hour, my treat, I'll cover the cost for you. All you have to do is, now that you've clicked thumbs up, just go to the right and click on the red subscribe button. And that'll ensure that not only can we spread the word and help others that are going through similar situations, but when we upload new videos, you'll also be notified. And don't worry, that's confidential too, so nobody will know. In fact, I won't even know. So send me a message, just let me know that you clicked on subscribe, and I'll put you in touch with the divorce coach, and I'll pay for the first hour, and you can get all your questions answered. Uh, don't worry, it's all confidential.
Thanks for watching.